that these homesteaders used to sing. And it kind of went like this. Yeah, how'd it go? <laughs> Like this, Nebraska land, sweet Nebraska land, and on, upon their burning soil we stand. We look across the plains and wonder why it never rains. We have no corn, we have no oats, we have no corn to feed our shoats. Our chickens are so very poor, they beg for crumbs outside the door. We do not live, we only stay. We are too poor to get away. That's a pretty sad song. But I would say today that Nebraska is one of the most prosperous states in the United States. In fact, it may be the most prosperous state in the United States. So they've had to make some, some great changes for that to, to happen. Nebraska is a big state. It's, an, it's over 600 miles long and about almost 300 miles wide. It is the center of the United States, uh, a, a, a town 90 miles east of where uh, my hometown, North Platte, has a park, 1733 Park it's called. It, from there it's 1733 miles to New York City and it's 1733 miles to San Francisco. So it's right in the middle. Originally when they put the transcontinental uh, highway in, it was Highway 30, and boy did they make a big mistake. They run it right through the middle of all of these towns. And, and speed was, uh, it'd take you all day, maybe all week to drive across the state, because they, you, 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 there's a lot of towns. So today it's Highway 80. We can go out here and get on Highway 80 and go clear to the East Coast. But when they took Highway 80, they were smart enough to make the roads go about three to five miles outside of town. So that you get on there and uh, keep right on going. Nebraska was originally settled by, or, or, uh, settled by three great Indian tribes. In fact, the name Nebraska is an Indian name. It means flat waters. The other thing that's kind of interesting, we think of it by being dry land, Nebraska has more miles of running water than any other state in the United States. They have South Platte River comes down from Colorado, North Platte comes down from Wyoming, and three miles east of my hometown they meet, and then it comes the Platte River. The whole eastern boundary of Nebraska is the Missouri River. And then there are five other smaller rivers in that state. The, uh, when the Homestead Act came in, it was very partially populated. Uh, when the Homestead Act came in, that was the way you could get a, uh, a square mile of land. You had to fence it within a certain period of time and put some kind of, a, of improvement on it. But when these People come in the homestead, most of them were farmers. So they, they went around and found a big beautiful valley and built probably the first house was probably a sod house. <coughs> and, uh, and they built the house and then the next thing they did is grab the plow and plowed up that beautiful grass. There, when you plant, plow up that land and plant your seed and do all that work, you're fooled with Mother Nature. And she's not a very, very she's a, a wicked woman. And so what happened uh, then is, is people started cutting down on farming. But there was a guy by the name of Ted Turner. He made a lot of money in, in a little soft drink called Coca-Cola from the land of Georgia. He had the Atlanta Braves, and still today the Braves, they play in Turner Stadium. He was an outdoorsman, and he came out to the Sand Hills in Nebraska, 
and he couldn't believe what he saw. Here's all this miles and miles of beautiful valleys and all of this grass, and but a lot of up and down and big valleys. So he came out and right away he said, this is it. So he bought 40 square miles and this had been homesteaded. So he bought this land and then took out all of the in fences inside and just put one big fence around the whole 40 miles, six foot high fence. Well now the people who lived north of his land to go to North Platte to, to shop and uh, do business, they had to drive around this big 40 miles, so they were very unhappy. But well, a real unhappiness came one day when two big se uh, semis pulled up and unloaded 20 buffaloes. And these people said, my God, we got the cattle is our whole industry. How do we know these the buffaloes not gonna spread disease? So they were extremely concerned. But uh, when Ted Turner come in, he took one look at this, and first of all, he put a big, a big lodge in, uh, 36 rooms, luxury lodge, and then he went down the valley and flooded the whole valley, and uh, planted, put in the Big Mount Bass and all that. The next valley he went in and planted all this crops, and then he, uh, he didn't harvest the crops, and then he brought in wild turkeys and pheasants and quail and, and uh, all of that. And uh, so he really turned that 40 square miles into a resort. And uh, so, but the, the people of, of Nebraska were not very happy with him. The, uh, this problem of, of, of uh, the, the mother nature with these rivers, finally somebody got smart, and they put a big dam in on the North Platte. And that dam backed the, the lake up behind it for 60 miles. And then somebody said, we got all that water, what about power? So they put a big power plant at the bottom of that, that dam. And pretty soon that worked, and so there's eight of those big lakes across Nebraska, backed up by dams, and then there's eight power plants. Nebraska is the cheapest electricity of any state in the United States. In fact, one of their slogans is the state of power, of power and progress. The uh, education being a big thing. When Nebraska first came into, in, they said that they, the first thing they provided for was three teachers colleges. One in the southeast corner of the state, one right in the middle of the state, one in the northwest. And then, the, uh, so education was important. In fact, the first four-year college west of the Missouri River was one of those teacher colleges in southeast of Nebraska. And of course then, the marvel of all marvels, the University of Nebraska, <laughs> the greatest unifying factor in the history of the world. And today, those people have one object one goal, and that's the University of Nebraska. They have a train that runs the full, full length of the state and picks people up and takes them to the games. There has not been, the stadium holds 94,000 people, there has not been an empty seat for 58 years. So it's pretty, pretty dedicated. Uh, today, that's a, uh, Ted Turner and his little, uh, his little, uh, oh, this, these uh, two big semi, I guess I told you, two big semis pulled up and unloaded 24 buffaloes. Recently I picked up Time Magazine here and it says 240 <coughs> reasons to celebrate America. And I thought, well, oh, that's interesting, and I leafed over and here is a picture of the Sand Hills of Nebraska. Ted Turner now has over 10,000 buffaloes. And the buffalo at one time was almost extinct. And Nebraska, North and South Dakota, Wyoming and Montana now has over 100 million buffaloes. 
live buffaloes instead of cattle. First of all, with cattle you have to prepare to feed them in the wintertime. The buffalo has that big warm coat and they just, uh, they, you never, they were never rounded up and they never will be. So secondly, they have very little disease. And third, when you send them to the meat markets and steer here and that, the buffalo will turn out 60% more meat than the steer. It's, it's a about change. You have to change. 